So here we want to discuss the overall goals of GATE and how it applies to clinical practice. So we first notice that when we look at GATE, the trunk essentially becomes the passenger and the legs do all the locomotor work. So this is how we get that Bugs Bunny look um, when we're walking. And we can break down the trunk movements though into superior, inferior, medial, lateral, and interposter directions because they essentially aren't zero. So even though we treat it as a passenger, there's still some uh, cost in terms of moving the trunk. And we can relate the, the movements to different kind of overall therapeutic goals. So for example, minimizing superior inferior movement helps with energy conservation. Also, minimizing medial lateral movement also helps with energy conservation. And then our ability to do single leg stance during medial lateral shifting and also it has to do with balance, and then our ability to really take big strides and increase cadence, which is kind of anterior, posterior displacements is what moves us forward. So that's our forward progression. So here's a recent study that looks at how much trunk movement's occurring during gait. We have thoracic uh, spine angles, so the chest relative to the lumbar spine, and then the lumbar spine relative to the pelvis here and the three different planes of, of motion. We can see that essentially in the sagittal plane there's a, like a very small amount of angular change. Here's 10 degrees, so we're talking 2 to 3 degrees um, on offset and then just a degree or two oscillation um, in the sagittal plane of the thorax movement on the trunk and then similarly of the lumbar spine. In terms of the frontal plane, there's a little bit of medial lateral leaning, but again, it's it's only a few degrees, and so this would be visually very difficult to pick up, um, although we do uh, need to pick it up when it's excessive, it's, for example, in a trend Ellenberg gait or something like that. And then we see in the lumbar spine a real consistent, you know, just change in, in um, uh, lateral flexion from a few degrees um, during the double support, as we're transitioning from double support uh, to single support, we can see that's occurring uh, symmetrically um, on both sides. And then in terms of rotation, there's actually quite a lot more relative to sagittal and frontal plane um, and within the spine. So there's there's upwards of um, you know five five ish degrees of thoracic rotation in lumbar, and a few more degrees in um, in a, a, I'm sorry, thorax and then lumbar, which then gives us that kind of twisting motion when we walk. So essentially, it's safe to say that there's not much motion uh, coming from the trunk um, during gait, so this is how we perceive of it as a passenger, and that essentially the goals of gait are balance, forward progression, and energy conservation. The balance challenge comes when we start single limb support, and that's often uh, involved in neurologic and gait problems when people have weakness. And so it's shown here in the frontal plane. Forward progression is all about um, uh, gait speed and achieving an adequate cadence combined with stride length um, to be successful. And then energy conservation is about how smooth we give the passenger a ride. So how smooth of a ride can we give the trunk? And some measurements, for example, that are fairly impressive um, and how we achieve a smooth ride. Uh, normal gait is the vertical movements of the head are around five centimeters, and the side-to-side -side movements of the, of the head are around four centimeters. So that's a pretty smooth ride. And that's it for uh, goals of gait and uh, trunk movement.